appeared on the soul draft and a group of zombies was already heading towards me. They're all around guys. They're coming right to me. Don't touch my raft. Just look at how many of them there are. Around me, there's a river, trees, and a small house. This is our chance, guys. Let's go. We just need to make it to that building in time. There we go. We're inside. First chest, guys. There's a pistol, ammo, and some notes. I didn't have time to read the notes as I needed to get back to my raft before the zombies completely tore it apart. Go away, zombies. All right, everyone on board, guys. Let's sail away as fast as we can. That's how hardcore these first 100 days begin. We have to constantly improve the raft and explore the world filled with a zombies that evolve every 10 days. Looks like we got away from the zombies. Look, they broke my engine. Ugh, I guess I'll have to craft it again. Let's quickly review the raft. It's held together by some barrels, has a couple of crates, and a tent with a sleeping bag. Down the river, I found a small location. It was a fishing boat with an abandoned cabin. We don't have a sword or an axe, nothing. We haven't even gathered wood yet. Well, let's carefully explore this location, because there might be a lot of useful stuff here. First thing on the boat, I found a crowbar. That's good, something to smack zombies. With. I also found a leather helmet, a fish, and a couple of bones. I'm done with the boat, guys. Let's head to the shore. An essential part of my survival is scavenging useful items. These items will definitely help us, especially ammo, a bit more fish, and a revolver. I found all of this in the house. In this survival, I forgot to mention that the zombies are a bit enhanced. They react to sound. The more you move and jump, the more they try to get to you. Near the house, there was more ruins. Let's loot them too. Okay, it seems safe here. In the first house, as you remember, I found an interesting note. Let's read it now. The river is called Zimazon, and it's your important ally. Along it, you can always find various places to explore. Be especially careful searching for sewers. These dungeons have lots of zombies and the rarest items. Some dungeons can even be entered on your app. Zimazon. Yeah, the name is really, um, clearly my team came up with it. After reading the note, I gathered some wood, made a crafting table, and the first tools. I feel like we're in for a huge journey along this Zimazon and with these damn zombies. Alright, let's look around. Look, there's an enormous bridge visible from here. I have a feeling there's a ton of zombies there. And on the left, I can see a brick building, or what's left of it. Before heading to these locations, I plan to gather some stone and iron if I was lucky. Luckily, there were several crates on the raft where I could easily stash my loot, and a tent with a sleeping bag. Basically, a ready-made bed. Let's go back to the raft and keep exploring this world. I didn't want to rush building a house. On the contrary, my goal was to thoroughly explore and loot resources on the first day. Nevertheless, night will come sooner or later, and we'll have to find some shelter because zombies spawn much more at night. Sailing without a motor is quite slow, but you can see everything on the river in detail. Okay, for starters, I want to go to these ruins and see what's there. I already see a couple of zombies, or I would say not even a couple. Alright guys, look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Okay, I'm gonna run as fast as I can. Zombie with a hat, one more coming from the outside. Guys, there's too many of them. Let's get out of here. <laughs> The second floor might save us. Close the door. Ah, oh, nice. And in that moment, I thought I was safe, when suddenly zombies started crawling from the second floor as well. Looks like we need to climb even higher. How many of them are there? It's my first day of survival. Why are there so many of you? There's bricks here, gunpowder, absolutely nothing. Wow, just look at this. It's the first day of survival and there's already so many of them here. I really hope they don't touch my raft because that's all I have, guys. Okay, let's see. There's another crate here. I really want to get to it. Okay, let's take a look. Thompson SMG and five mags. Take that, zombies. Now I have a proper gun. Nice. Well, friends, I think it's time to leave this place. Carefully, carefully, carefully. There's too many zombies. There's too many. Let's get out of here. Come on, we're sailing away. Next, I had to decide where to go because the river split into two parts. I chose to go to the right. Well, friends, I don't know. Let's go to the right. Maybe we'll flow to the left later. I wonder what I can find there. Having distanced myself from the zombies a bit and caught my breath, I started thinking about where to spend the night. The night is approaching. Making a bed right now is practically impossible, but we have a raft with a sleeping bag. The plan is to create some kind of starter base where I can park the raft and wait out the night. Plus, maybe it'll be our starter base. Let's land somewhere here and start gathering wood. Almost by sunset, I finished building my small hangar. Alright guys, let's sail right into it on a raft and close the entrance with cobblestone. I already thought of a place for walking around the raft, and on top of that, I'll put some chests right here, which I'll do right now. This will be our little hangar base. Maybe we'll make a few of these along the river. Uh, and by the way, I don't know the size of it yet. We'll stash resources, and if we need, wait out the night. Day 2. The night passed fairly calmly, but in the morning, there were a lot of zombies all around me. I hear them guys. The best option is to go out through the roof. 
proof. We'll wait here until Zeman reaches 100 million subscribers. After dealing with the zombies, I began to look around. There was at least one round around my base, and I thought it was worth checking out. Okay, seems like there's no zombies here. Look, scattered cars, barbed wire, and boxes. Okay, there's boxes here. Two iron, some iron gloves, and three leather. Awesome. Let's take a little stroll along this road. But first, I think we need to go to the mine, because look at me. At this rate, I won't last long, so we need to make some armor. After looting a couple more crates, as I mentioned, I headed to the mine. But it wasn't easy in the mines, because in any dark areas, zombies spawn 10 times more than usual. Oh my god, there's so many zombies here, guys! Okay, barbed wire, barbed wire, I really hope this will help. We just started surviving, I can't even imagine what will happen next. Let's quickly light everything up and gather some resources. Another interesting survival awaits us, guys. I also know that you can upgrade the raft and even change its size. I don't know how to yet, but I think we'll explore the map and find out some way. On the third day, I was already in iron armor. Comparing all my 100 day starts, especially with zombies, it was a decent beginning. Guys, this survival has one feature that you don't know about. There are absolutely no friendly animals here. The world is overrun by zombies, so the only way for us to eat is to make a farm. Let's make a water bucket. Good thing we have no water problem. Let's get some seeds now, great, and plant them. I also plan to build some fencing so that the zombies wouldn't trample everything. Also on this day, I was going to gather some wood for our supplies. Day 4 guys, still a lot of zombies outside, so today we need to strengthen our base a little bit. My task was to collect at least half a stack of barbed wire. You could find it everywhere in different locations, or just on the road. Alright guys, let's take it home. Now we should feel a bit safer. Great, well, we protected as well as we could. In the future, of course, we'll improve on this. Day 5, guys. Days go by so fast, I can't even keep up with everything. Today, we're going on another journey because we haven't sailed for so many days. I miss my raft already. It's still very slow, but I soon hope we can make that what's it called, the uh, engine. A bit further down the river from my built hangar, there were some houses, and I thought I could definitely find some useful items there. Alright, we have a small dock here, let's park, and they're already running towards me. Uh, okay, I fell, and some zombies are running towards us. Okay guys, there's quite a lot of you here. Even though there's lots of zombies, let's try to quickly run through and find a place to hide at least. Okay, a crate, some ammo, nice. Let's go zombies, approach carefully one by one. For now, the zombies don't do a lot of damage, but later on, they'll become much stronger. But for now, as you can see, they can't even break blocks, and they're quite stupid. Okay, let's carefully get out just like that, and run away as fast as we can. I can't figure out what this place is, either some village or a research base. Under this location, there are catacombs. There might be useful loot, but be careful, it's not that simple. Alright, it says something about catacombs here. We're going to look for them now. Besides the fact that there are a ton of zombies here... Okay, fine. Look, there are different houses here, let's grab the loot. Oh, wait a minute, there's some descent down and some radioactive mushrooms. What is this? Okay, fine. Uh, let's loot the first floor first. Ammo, let's grab all of this and try to go down there. Wait, wait, what's hitting me? Oh, it's the mushrooms. Wait, come on, eat, eat, eat. 3 HP, 3 HP, guys, 3 HP. I wasn't planning to go down because it was already dark. Only later did I find out that a gas mask was needed to go down. The next day, I decided to go back to that location. There's a little fountain here. We missed it last time. And a basketball court. Wow, it looks pretty cool and everything around here is quite apocalyptic as you can see. Okay, the zombies are everywhere as usual. You can never take your eyes off them in this world. Overall, friends, it looks really beautiful. I love the map that my team makes. It all looks very atmospheric. Kudos for that. Okay, I found a gas mask. Maybe I know why we might need it. After that, I decided to go down to that basement again, and indeed, the radiation wasn't affecting me anymore. I could descend and loot the dungeon peacefully. Look guys, it's half flooded here. I think the loot should should be really good here, considering we need the gas mask for it. Okay, a radiation zone. What else could be here besides these zombies? Alright, a scar, guys. This is great. Not even 10 days have passed and we've already found the scar. Since we have a gas mask now, we can try going into the sewer. Also, there are these radioactive mushrooms scattered around here. But I don't see any good loot here. Ooh, combat knife. Well, okay, let's take it. Dealing with the zombies with a scar is much easier. No loot here. Why did he even come here? Okay, three magazines, wheat, and a cobweb. I was hoping to find more resources here, but as you can see, there's nothing more. Now I think it's time to head home. 
I give this location 5 points. It was very atmospheric with a ton of zombies. And most importantly, it had cool loot. But sooner or later, it's time to go back home. On the next day, I decided to upgrade my hangar a little bit. So I dug up enough cobblestone and turned everything into stone bricks. Besides, not far down the river was a birch forest, where I got some birch to make the floor brighter and softer, just from birch wood. Alright, what's this? A trader? What's a trader doing here? I just found a trader walking down the road. Surviving in this world is tough. Zombies are everywhere, but I'm not afraid of these things. I survived a leg fracture when I was little. What? Oh look, you can buy a lot of things from him. The only problem is I needed iron for all these items, and I didn't have iron yet. I understand that this trader will probably leave soon, and meeting him is a rarity, but we won't lock him up yet. I'll just let him go walking, and we'll gather some iron. So hopefully next time we'll be able to buy some cool stuff. Realizing that iron is essential, I spent the whole next day in the caves. Day 9. Today I plan to make the first upgrade for the raft. Give it the deserved engine. Allowing faster movement across rivers, lakes, and oceans. Okay guys, I found the crafting recipe for this engine in the recipe book. Look, we need to find redstone and we need iron, but we still need steel blocks. Okay, let's get to it. First, I thought about where to get steel blocks and remembered the remains of a rusty ship that we explored on the first day. Again, I had to go into the caves to find redstone, but we only needed just a little bit. Let's craft it, done! Guys, look! Now let's try to place it on our raft. Okay, look, it's done! That's it, now our raft has an engine. Let's take it for a test drive. It's moving so much faster, this is amazing. Now at least we can escape from the zombies because before we were moving at a turtle's pace. This is just perfect, guys. Day 10, zombies became much stronger. Their spawn rate increased and now they dealt more damage and moved faster. But as you understand, this won't stop us from exploring this world even further. Day 10, guys. Since we improved the raft quite a bit, today I'm gonna go on a small adventure traveling our rivers. In short, a about the water space we're in, the farther I sailed, the more branches to different rivers I discovered. Initially, I thought it was all a straight line. I just appear and sail along the river until I reach day 100. But here, as it turns out, there are so many different branches that I don't even know where we can go. Besides the zombies, often sailing on rivers, you can encounter many different animals, such as beavers, crocodiles, frogs, and very different interesting plants. Look, what is this? Some kind of plant? I just love how diverse this world is. It's so cool. On day 12, I decided to take a breather and slightly upgrade my farm. Honestly, survival is going so fast, I feel like I can't even keep up with the actions I'm doing. Alright, you could say our anger is a small base. We'll definitely keep improving it. We have a small farm here and so on. But primarily, of course, I want to upgrade the raft. Some upgrades can be crafted, and for some, there's no recipe. I'll just have to find them. Maybe in this survival, we'll build some more significant base, or just stick to the strategy of making several of these bases all over the rivers that we explore. On the next day, I decided to embark on a very dangerous expedition to that same bridge I saw on the first day. It was quite a high abandoned bridge with very, very strong zombies. Well, look, the chance of surviving is about 15%. But you're on Zeman's channel. We have no other options. Let's go and try to explore it. I took a bunch of blocks to carefully build my way up to the bridge because there was no easy way to get to it from any other side. I just gotta make sure that those zombies don't knock me off because falling from here would be quite bad. Just in case, I brought a couple of water buckets to water bucket clutch in the worst case scenario. Okay guys, there's quite a lot of them here. Alright, they're coming towards me. Easy, easy, okay, I'll try to take down as many zombies as possible. Seriously guys, there's so many of them here. Well, there are no zombies here now, some are still pretty far away. Okay, let's check if coming up here was worth it. Oh nice, lapis. Okay, there's iron, ammo, some armor, a chest plate. Alright, cool I came up here for a reason let's go but the most important thing was up ahead I found an upgrade for my small raft it was a radio tower guys wait this looks like an upgrade for the raft let's go down and test it out new day guys I didn't have time to test out our new upgrade yesterday if it's an upgrade let's try to test it out now okay it's set up wait does that mean a raft have a radio tower? I had no idea what I needed it for, but believe me, without this upgrade, it would have been so much harder to progress. Morning of the next day. In the coming days, I plan to embark on the farthest journey imaginable. But before that, I want to improve my base a bit. First, I'd like more storage space. And secondly, I don't even have a bedroom. Well, okay, I can sleep on the raft. But today, I want to build a small house, or rather a tower, that will nicely attach to the hangar. It was a kind of river lighthouse. There were three 
floors. The first one for chests, the second for a bedroom, and the third floor for an observation deck to always see from which side the zombies are coming from. After some finishing touches, it turned out pretty cool. This could actually be called the river lighthouse. Day 17. I gathered all the important items and today I'm going on a short journey. I don't know how long it'll take and how much we'll have to sail, but my team warned that some distances would be just huge. And so it happened. In the next five days, I was on the road. Along the way, I sailed through rivers surrounded by deserts, rivers with extreme cold and penguins waving around me. Of course, there were some zombie attacks and some encounters with them were a bit tense. About the winter location, it's pretty cold here. I wouldn't have thought that this would be a problem, but there's an upgrade for the raft in the form of a grill that can still warm us up. Unfortunately, I haven't found it yet, but I hope we can find it later. All right, let's leave the raft here for now and there's something interesting ahead. Okay, zombies. Okay, okay, wait, 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 there's way too many zombies. Wait, guys, run, 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 run. At some point, I had to run from the zombies because there were really a lot of them. Okay, guys, let's go inside. Come on, get in, get in. All right, good. I don't think they should be able to get in here. Look at how many of them there are. Oh my god. Look, there are items scattered around here. Wait, wait, my emerald. Give it back. Ah, uh, it's useless. Look, there are items scattered around here like this. Of course, I'll try to pick them up. Diamond, okay. After looting a ton of items on these shelves, I realized it was time to slowly get out of here. I think we're done with this location. Let's get out of here. And so we ended up on the roof. But I didn't even know that a new horde of zombies would appear and I'd have to run away from them. Stop, what? Look at this new horde. Oh my God. I had no choice but to get out of here. Run, guys. We need to run faster to the raft. This is just crazy. Okay, it looks like we got away, but now we have a small new problem. Look at our raft, it's in the ice. I got into a very unpleasant situation. The ice around my raft froze, and most likely if I had a furnace or a grill, this situation wouldn't have happened. So here's the plan, friends. Break or don't break it, these ice blocks will eventually spawn anyway. I mined some cobblestone, and now I'll place it like this, and on top of them, I'll put some torches. This way, I hope that the ice won't spawn here, and we can safely get out of here. You'll be shocked, but I spent a whole two days on this. The surface of the winter location was quite large, and I sailed quite far. As you can see, if the raft is poorly upgraded, it can cause some problems. So I decided to just go back home. Day 29. Guys, I'm finally back home. We're home. It was an incredible journey. I'll put all the resources away and I'll start thinking about how we can upgrade the raft. While I sorted all the resources, day 30 came. Zombies upgraded for the third time. Now there were even some mutated versions. But as you understand, our survival continued. In one of the 10 days, zombies will learn to break blocks. And here, the whole gameplay we had before will change radically. Good morning, friends. There are a lot of zombies as usual. And today, I want to try and make a territory for my hangar. Basically, I'm just gonna build a fence. Let's make it so that we can see the entire area, but it also protects us. On day 30, I set up the foundation, and by day 31, I completed everything. I also dug a small trench so that the zombies would fall into it. On day 32, 33, and 34, I decided to improve my farm. The idea was to find as many crops as possible, starting from carrots and ending with pumpkins. First, I went to the cave and found watermelons, and in the following days, I managed to find pumpkins and miraculously found a carrot in my chest. I think I just didn't notice it before. Farm improvement also took some time. Zombies were always coming, considering that the new ones could also shoot. It's a new day, guys. Look, today I came across a very interesting information that I found out. In the recipe book, I randomly found the crafting recipe for another raft. If you thought we'd survive on this raft the whole time, I think not. Turns out my team modeled and added several types of rafts to the game that could be built and upgraded. What's interesting is that the crafting recipe for the new raft is really difficult. The three logs is easy enough to find, but the other components are scaring me a little bit. All of them are super rare in this world, but creating a new huge raft could completely change the gameplay. I think we can even live on the new raft, we just have to build it. While I was trying to figure out how to gather resources, I encountered the trader again. Oh look, alright, let's take all the iron, we have to buy something. Stop! What? I don't get it. Why is everything so expensive? Is this just a price spike or just a different trader? A bit disappointed, I still managed to buy some items. It seemed like a good deal to me. On the next day, I found a new location, which as it turns out, wasn't really far from my base. It was a farm. Alright guys, hangar. There's many zombies as usual. Maybe we can find something useful here. The only thing is, of course, I should have found this farm a bit earlier. Considering how much time I spent finding watermelon seeds, and if they're here, it'll be really frustrating. 
reading. Surprisingly, there weren't many zombies, but there were plenty of watermelons, pumpkins, and various crops. Well, I think it's a success, guys. Anyway, we found a lot of different foods and even a new gun. Bringing home all the loot, I was surprised. It turns out that I found one component needed to make an upgrade on the farm. You'd be surprised, but after going through all my things in the chests, I found another component. There's only three components left. We have an iron block. On our first day of rafting, we had a fork in the road, and we decided to go to the right, encountering a lot of interesting locations. However, we never sailed to the left, and today, we're gonna fix that. I don't know what awaits us in this direction, but as you can see, there are outlines of trees. I really hope this isn't a winter location, because then we definitely have to look for some furnace to install on our raft. Yeah, look, it's some kind of road. Having landed on the shore, I didn't encounter a single zombie. Okay, if you believe that, congratulations. There were just a ton of zombies! What is going on, guys? Back to the raft! Let's sail around this location a bit. There's still a lot of them here. Let's try to go through now. Look, it's a huge abandoned location. Kind of like a supermarket with a gas station. Or a gas station with a supermarket. You decide. I didn't choose. A change of terms doesn't change the sum. Carefully. No matter how carefully I wanted to go, the zombie still aggroed me. But probably this path turned out to be much more convenient and easier than if we try to deal with that horde. And here are some good resources. Look, various plates. I like that there are a lot of different blocks in this location. We can use them for decor. It wouldn't hurt to make a second base here, would you agree? Alright, the zombies are coming. I gotta be careful. As I was saying, in this survival, zombies react to sounds. The moment I accidentally sprint, a crowd instantly aggroed me. No, guys, what's up with that? Let's get out of here fast. To the raft, to the raft, come on. I didn't loot everything there, but there are just way too many zombies. Maybe later when we get stronger, we can come back and loot more. Though the zombies will also get stronger. Moving on down the river, I finally encountered the first sewer. If you remember, at the beginning of survival, I mentioned that these are cool dungeons where you can find the best loot. Oh look, today's a jackpot for us. Both tough zombies and cool dungeons with good loot. And why? Because you hit that like button on this video and subscribe, right? If you subscribe, you won't miss new videos. So let's quickly hit that sub button and head to the sewer. Let's go. It's a bit dark and creepy here. At least we can collect some cobwebs. They might come in handy for wool or something. And again, there's a fork. The famous dilemma. Left or right. This location had a really eerie ambient vibe. It was atmospheric, but also kind of scary. Honestly, I want to turn back already. I haven't found a single chest yet. I'm just walking through these tunnels constantly scared by various sounds, waiting for some zombie to just pop up from around the corner. In the end, there were no zombies. From the twists and turns of the tunnel, I entered a small room, which was like a treasure trove. Here it is, guys. Whew. We finally made it. Let's see what's here. What? 10 diamonds in one chest, pieces of some armor, just wow, a bio gun? And seemingly everything was great. We looted the location and we could head back home. However, a surprise awaited me on the way back. Wait, why do I hear zombie sound so close? Oh my god guys, what is this? It's a trap! It turns out zombies started spawning on the way back, and it was a dungeon trap. I won't hide the fact that every sewer is like that. Blockading everything with blocks and barbed wire, I started digging up, because going back the same way was not something I wanted to do. Alright guys, we made it out. Where's our raft? I got lost. Okay, there it is. Let's get on and go home. Enough for today. Day 39. Look guys, we still can't make an upgraded raft, but it turns out I discover something new every day. It appears we can make that grill, which costs the river to freeze and the coal tortured us. Just need one coal and seven iron. Just tell me, why didn't I find this recipe earlier? Okay, there we go. Let's place it on a raft. Nice! Just perfect! Now we can actually travel further into winter locations. On the next day, I made a few fishing rods, went to a deeper place, and started catching fish. The best part was that we could cook it right on the grill. Guys, the fish is just delicious. I feel its taste as if through the screen. I got so into it that I decided to see how much fish I could catch in three days. In the coming days, I continued exploring locations. They were all different. Beaver dams, ruined houses, and even ruins at the bottom of the ocean. In the end, I managed to gather all the components to make a new raft. Friends, we've been heading towards this for a long time. I can't imagine how it will look. Alright, let's place it. Whoa, it's huge! As soon as I placed the upgraded raft, which was quite empty, I unlocked a lot of new recipes. 
Now, let's improve our raft. First, let's make some beams. I guess this will be like a canopy. Great, we started. You could craft and place almost everything. A crafting table, furnace, beds, even walls and a roof. This took quite a bit of wood. It's an amazing survival, guys. I could only dream about traveling and surviving in a zombie apocalypse on different rafts. And that we could assemble and upgrade them not just from blocks, but from complete models. Well, now let's try to explore the map even further. When it came to surviving on a raft in a zombie apocalypse, Apocalypse, this is exactly the kind of raft they imagine. It's a whole new level. On board, there was already a furnace, so we could try to get through the winter arctic location. And finally, we're passing through calmly. There are a few zombies on the shore, but as you understand, they're not particularly interested to us. So, let's keep sailing. The dream to play a survival game on a raft had been with me for a long time. And as you can guess, the dream turned into reality. On day 51, I sailed into a new location. An infected zone. There were tougher zombies around, and the area itself was a bit, let's say, sick. Gotta be careful while sailing here, there's so much stuff. We'll try to loot every building, get the best items for us, and sail further. Besides, the infected zone was a crucial place because it led us to open water, almost like an ocean, and the river ended here. Alright, look, we're quickly looting everything here, trying not to catch the eyes of zombies, and we'll keep sailing. I think it'll get even more interesting ahead because I can't even imagine what locations are waiting for us on the other side of the river. So look, some building here, everything scattered, everything's destroyed. But there are crates. We love crates. Some ammo, a bit of redstone, and a note. This place appeared out of nowhere. The houses and structures here are a rare anomaly. They were never built here. Possibly the work of those who created the virus, but no one really knows. Oh, guys, an anomaly, I think? Alright, I hope that abnormal zombies don't attack us. I was glad to find some plot-related books that told the story of where the virus originated and how zombies took over this world. The story is really cool here. Special respect to those who wrote those notes. They're genuinely really well written. Besides cool items and notes, I found an upgrade for my raft. It was a purifier. Now we can collect some water in a bottle, pass it through the purifier, and get regeneration potions. The process is long, guys, but it works. Oh man, this is great. I could live on this raft. Safe, spacious, like my own apartment, essentially. Look, it's pretty cozy, just missing a carpet. Alright, some more ruins. Okay, zombies, zombies, two zombies. Alright, we dealt with them. It's quite spooky. A horde of two or three zombies could appear out of nowhere. But beyond all the notes I found in the infected zone, one was the most important. It had coordinates for a flooded city, and it was really, really far away. Well, okay, let's think about what to do with this. The second part of the video begins. The journey across the ocean. Despite the potential dangers in the ocean and the possibility of underwater shark zombies, I don't know, I still decided to head to the flooded city. The journey will be long, guys, but I stocked up on a huge amount of wood I have fishing rods so we can catch fish and we can make regeneration potions. So let's see what we'll be doing in this ocean. Attention, I think this is the longest distance I have ever covered on a raft. Seven days on the way. I fished, juggled blocks, sometimes even swam. But swimming and juggling blocks were just for the shot. In reality, I just sat there and sailed. Various dungeons spawned on the water surface, from protruding ruins to ships, and most importantly, lighthouses. I managed to encounter one of these lighthouses. And what do you think was on it? Of course, a lot of zombies. Honestly, I'm I'm super curious to explore this lighthouse, because not much exciting happens in the ocean. Let's dock and try to deal with these bunch of zombies. After dealing with the zombies and starting to explore the dungeon, I realized it's not just a place to find loot. The lighthouse is where you can get coordinates for some different locations. Looks like parkour awaits us. Let's go! I'm the number one parkour expert! Honestly, I don't really like parkour. Okay, look, a room with some button. Alright, let's try to figure this out. So, I guess I can just come here, clear the zombies, climb to the top, press the button, and get the coordinates in the chat? On the way to the city in the next few days, I encountered a couple more lighthouses, and indeed, each lighthouse had a button. The coordinates of the location were different, though. I don't know how this really works, probably with command blocks. I wrote down all the coordinates, and judging by them, they were all somewhere near our river, so I kept going towards the city. And finally, by day 63, we managed to reach it. Look! Guys, it's just incredible. We essentially found civilization in the zombie apocalypse. Not a single city in 63 days. And here it is. You need to understand that more than half of the survival has already passed. Zombies were getting stronger one way or another. From day 70 and onwards, a huge horde of zombies would attack me every 10 days. I don't know what kind of zombies might be here, but I see them already. The mission for the city was simple. Try to find something exclusive here, and if not, loot a ton of resources just to last us a life. 
lifetime. Let's just climb up here and check everything around from up there. It's very interesting why the city ended up flooding. From day 100 and onwards, there's not much of a storyline, just pure survival. So I don't think there's much point in looking for it here. There were indeed plenty of resources. Our journey to this location wasn't in vain, especially blocks that the city is made out of, which we can use to upgrade our base. I spent a whole two days in the city. Toward the end of the first day, I climbed to the top floor of one of the buildings, crafted a campfire, and started watching what was happening. Zombies began spawning a lot. To avoid them aggroing on me for the last time, I closed all the gaps and waited for morning. New day. I think today we'll try to loot the city and head back home. Ugh, how far do we have to sail home? Well, let's not think about that for now. Let's go. Luckily, I managed to find some notes that explain the story of the city. When the virus appeared, damn workers turned into zombies and couldn't maintain it anymore. Eventually, the dam broke and the whole city got flooded. The last residents tried to survive on rooftops, but sooner or later, the virus caught up with them too. That's the story of the city. In fact, we completed the achievement. We figured out what it's all about. Definitely leave a like for that and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, I don't even know how you're still here. Subscribe! Alright, zombies are waiting for me down below, and my raft is over there. What do you think? Am I just gonna stand here? Let's go, jump! That's it guys, let's get out of here. I don't regret coming to the city at all. In the next few days, I just wanted to calmly sail back home. I had things to do, considering that soon, zombies would become very powerful, and I needed to prepare for them. My gear doesn't match their level at all right now, but something terrible happened. It turns out the engine had a durability. Why did we lose speed? Is something wrong with my keyboard? Where did the engine go? As you understand, the engine just broke. I absolutely didn't think about making a spare one, and I didn't even think that this could even happen. And here we are guys, in the middle of the endless ocean. Our river at survival, Amazon rivers, whatever, and here we're stuck in the ocean. Let's see what we have in the chest. For crafting we need redstone, iron, and steel blocks. So we have redstone, we have iron, but no steel blocks. I have no words, we're drifting at the speed of a turtle. Towards the evening, I saw some small island on the horizon. Alright guys, we have a small island here, it kinda saved us. I'm really nervous right now, as you understand, if we don't survive, it's over. Let's make torches and quickly light everything up to the max. I also decided to make some posts around the island and put torches on them to prevent zombies from spawning. That's it, we'll survive this night. New day, the question arose, where to find steel blocks? I'd like to get back home as soon as possible, and then I remembered that I was constantly passing wreckage of some ships. It seemed to me that they were made of steel blocks. At this speed, we'll be sailing for a long time, but we need to try. Alright, I see a ship on the horizon. Yes, look, it's made of steel blocks. We only need two, and we'll have an engine. That's it, guys, we're saved. Crafting the engine, and let's go home. The situation was really critical, but thinking right and finding a solution actually saved my life. Let's go, guys, we're home again. On day 70, zombies didn't attack me. It seems hordes will be attacking me from day 80, and by that time, we better be prepared. Coming home and unloading all the items, I decided to go into the cave to get diamonds for a full set of armor and finally making an enchanting table. On day 76, both were ready. After enchanting the armor, I started improving the base, widened the trench and filled it with water. On day 77, I spent time making another tower. Maybe in the future there'll be four, but for now, two of them on the riverside. Also, in the next few days, I replenished the wood supply and worked a bit on the farm. Day 80, everything is covered in endless fog, and here an army of zombies started rushing at me. Alright guys, there's so many of them, I really hope my entire base will survive. One of the advantages was that zombies still couldn't break blocks for now, however, this will change in 10 days. Alright friends, let's just beat them, it would be better to find turrets. It would be easier with them. I won't have any ammo, oh my god. Okay, water slows them down. You might ask, why am I fighting them now if they can't break blocks? Well, what if some zombie comes along and breaks all the blocks? I fought with the zombies the whole day. At some point, I switched to a bow to save ammo. But considering it was enchanted, it worked quite well. Day 81. Well guys, yesterday was quite a day. The main thing is that our base held up. But the real question is, can it survive in 9 days? So now we're gonna work on improving everything and set up a backup base just in case. First, I planned an evacuation plan. You might ask, how? If the zombies wreck my base and I need to run, I'll hop on a minecart, dropping right onto my raft, ready to run. Alright, we need some rails for that. Let's hit the caves and get some.
I even crafted a couple golden ones. By day 83, the emergency exit bridge was good to go. If I need to bail, we'll head to the second base, which we're gonna build downstream. Okay, here we're gonna build it, right in the middle of the water. It saves us from wasting time running to the entrance, plus zombies move slower in the water. I planned the base as a tower, a bit wider on top. By day 87, it was done. Look, we've got a couple of days until day 90. I suggest checking those coordinates we found at the lighthouse. Small raft or the big one for the trip? Today I'm taking the small one. If there are spots where the big one won't fit, I would have to go on foot. Here, we'll leave the raft and go into the woods. What if I see Herobrine or a ghost in there? In just two minutes, I found myself at the location. An abandoned airport. It's amazing, if it wasn't for those lighthouse coordinates, we might have never found this. Okay, we're here. I can already see a ton of zombies on the runway. There were many zombies, but not enough to overwhelm me. Look, there's a hangar, and inside, loads of loot! No wonder we wouldn't have stumbled upon this location without those lighthouses. If we had these weapons at the start, survival would probably be really boring. There was also a small control tower where I found a couple of notes about the start of the zombie apocalypse and the loss of communication with planes. And of course, some useful stuff as well. Alright guys, we looted the airport. It's a pleasant surprise, considering I hadn't even planned on finding it. Before day 90, I further improved my base. And then, day X arrived. I don't know what to expect, but zombies should start breaking blocks. Let's go guys! I couldn't handle such a massive zombie inflow and gradually they started getting inside the base. Okay guys, they're getting through, they're getting through, I don't know how, but reload, 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 come on, we have to survive guys. Okay, the worst part is that they're starting to break everything below me. And so I made it to the emergency exit and was ready to hop on the minecart at any moment. Friends, there's so many of them, I'm just holding on until the last moment. Luckily, today I didn't have to abandon the base. Unbelievable. But what will happen on day 100, I... I can't even imagine. These are the last 10 days of survival on the raft in a zombie apocalypse. I wanted to explore everything I hadn't yet. On day 91, I plan to fully restore my base. My thoughts guys, here are my thoughts. It's just an incredible survival. You should definitely subscribe to the channel right now if you haven't already. So you never miss such amazing survival stories again. On days 93 and 94, I mined obsidian. You probably guessed why. Zombies take the longest to break it. So I wanted to fortify my base as much as possible. Two stacks, two stacks of obsidian. I didn't leave the computer at all. Let's build. Many of you might suggest surrounding the entire base with lava, but as you understand, zombies don't burn in the sun in our survival, so pouring lava is kinda useless. In the next few days, I had to mine more obsidian to fully protect my base. On day 98, I decided to take another ride on my raft around the local waters. I really like water-themed survivals and everything related to rafts. Who remembers what this main river is called? Zimazonka, I think? We've practically survived 100 days on it. The raft upgrade is incredible. Basically, it's a floating house with chests, a crafting table, furnaces, and even a bed. Oh, by the way, I don't remember if I showed you, but I set up a bed. I started waiting for day 99 and gathered all my best items, ready for day 100. It's day 100! The zombies are already attacking us right now! We'll fight them off as best we can, guys! They're breaking through, but we won't let them! Obsidian, wait, they're breaking Obsidian! Guys, they're breaking through into the base! I'm doing what I can! Most importantly, I'm ready to evacuate! Evacuate. All right, all right, they're starting to break the tower. They're getting in. We can't win anymore. We have to evacuate. Let's go, let's go, let's go, guys. Oh my god, there's so many of them. They're coming from all sides. Goodbye, Raft. Come on, guys, let's go up. It's the finale. We can't go anywhere else. We can't retreat. Simply nowhere. Come on. Oh my god, there's so many of them coming from all sides. Let's go, friends. Just a bit more. Just to endure. We just need to survive until sunrise. They're starting to break the base. Okay, for this case, guys, I prepare TNT. Let's go! I had to endure for about five more minutes, and you won't believe it, I managed to do it. Okay, friends, this is insane. We managed to survive. We managed to go through these 100 days in hardcore, and the most interesting thing is, my raft survived.